In this video, I'm going to talk about composition, which is something that is very common in Java. Composition is basically when you have an object that it's comprised of other objects. Those other objects can be created by you or can come with, you know, standard libraries in Java. So let's do this for example. Let's have a class address. This class is used to store or to represent a given address, hopefully internationally. There's going to be a string. It's going to be, it's going to have a string that is the street. It's going to have an integer that it's a number. It's got, going to have another string, which is the city in which it is. It's going to have another string, which is the postal code for that city. And it's going to have another string, which denotes the province, whatever division that city is in. Now, this is already uh, this is already composing because you're using this address. You're enhancing this with a string object, with string objects all over the place, and strings are objects that somebody else created. So, but you're very used to this if you're programming in Java. Now we have all these things. Let's add a few things to this class. I'm adding a constructor here. I know this is a constructor because it's a method that has the same name as the class, as you see highlighted there, and it has no return value. This constructor takes in a string, an integer, a string, a string, and a string, right? And they correspond to the street, the number of the street, the city, the province, and the postal code. And what I'm going to do in the constructor is I'm just going to initialize those values in the class. Okay, so the street is going to take the value s, the number is going to take the value n that's passed over here, the city is going to take the value c that's passed over there, the postal code the value pc passed over here, and the province the value prov passed over here. Very simple constructor. This method is called, this, this constructor is used to instantiate this class when you first want to create an object of type address. Now let's go over some of the other methods. There's another method here. Now, for some postal codes, particularly in the US, you can have a number that's, you can have either a five number postal code or a five number plus four, a nine number postal code. If you have a nine number postal code and you call get five zip, what you will get is the first five numbers. Okay, so you're just gonna get the first five numbers. So I just have a method here to get the first five numbers of the postal code. That's it. Then I'm going to have another method that returns a boolean and it's going to tell me if it's a valid US postal code. I'll pass in a string and it will just tell me if it's a valid if it's a valid US postal code. If you do not know what this does, don't worry about it. Just think about the following. This method will say true if it's a valid US postal code or false if it's not a valid US postal code. Then we have another method to string. This basically just returns a string with all the values in some specific format, with all the values of the address. So those are the methods of the address class, uh, the, the methods that I want to talk about. So it has the, the member variable street number city postal code and province, a constructor that takes all of those uh, uh, that takes parameters to fill out all of those. It has a method to get the first five digits of the first five uh, characters of the of the postal code, and it has a method to return whether a postal code is a valid U.S. postal code or not. Also has a method to return a formatted string with all the values. So in order to test this class, we can create a main method. Now remember, main methods are static, which means I cannot just call, you know, the method get5zip just by itself. I have to build an object of type address right here, right? Although I am in the class address, because this method is static, I have to build an address class. You can watch the videos on static uh, and instance uh, variables and methods. So I declare an object, a, uh, the variable a, which is a type address, and I initialize it with, with North St. Louis 5500 and Chicago, Illinois 60625-0453, which is kind of an acceptable zip, uh, kind of an acceptable postal code in the US. 
And then I call some of the methods just to see that they work. First I call the toString, which is going to give me the formatted address. Then I will get the 5-zip, which is going to get me 60625. Then I ask whether 60625 is a valid US postal code. Then I ask which it is. Then I ask if, um, if 60625-0453 is a valid US postal code, which it also is. And then I ask whether 675662 is a valid US postal code, which is not. So let's run this program, compile and run, and we'll see what happens. It's compiling down at the bottom, so let me expand this. And we got the address formatted right there, the five digit zip code, and the first two zip codes were valid and the last one was not. And here's the main method for you to compare. The address, the five, uh, just the five digits, whether the first, the second, and the third are valid uh, US zip codes. And here's the output. So this class is a class. You have built many classes like this, I hope, by now. Now, let's use this class somewhere. So let's create a person class, a person class that has a name, an address, and a year of birth. It has an address, and notice that the type of the address is not a string. It's of type address. It's the same type of the object that you just tested and created. I'm going to clear this. So in the constructor, I'm going to create two constructors, one with just the name, just, just because, and then one where you, where you give it the name as a string and the address as an address object. So in here, you're going to pass a string, which you've done hopefully many times. You will pass a string, which is something in quotes, and then you will pass an address object. You have to create an address object to pass to person if you want to use this constructor. And what this constructor does is it initializes the name to N and the address, which is this field of type address, to A. Again, this is a constructor because it's a method with the same name of the class and with no return value. <clears throat> I'm going to have another constructor here that just takes the name. Might not use it. Actually, going to get rid of it. I don't think I'm using it. All right, then I'm going to have a couple of methods just for the sake of argument. I'm going to have a get h method, which what this will do is it, it'll subtract the current year from the year of birth. So it will subtract the current year minus the year of birth. Okay. If you want to use year in Java, you have to import java.time.year. So this will get the current age of the person approximately. Now, this one is a two string, which basically will say the name in parentheses, it's going to be the age and in a new line, it's going to call the address to string method. Look how we're composing here. We're taking advantage of all the abilities of the address and we use it here in the person. Remember, we're in the person class, we're going to print the person stuff, but then when we want to print the address, there's no need to like rewrite, you know, and get all the fields from address, the name, the, the street, the number, the zip code. We just say address to string because this method already address to string. If we go to the address class, address to string already does the formatting for us. Okay, so this is my person class. Very simple. It has a few variables, a constructor, and two methods. So I'm going to test it with the main method as well. Look how I am interacting with the object that I previously created. First, I'm going to create an address. Why? Because I need an object of type address to initialize a person. And I'm going to initialize the address to the street is going to be Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, the number is 1600, the city is Washington, the province is DC, and the zip code, just the five digits, is 20500. Now, I will create because this method is static. If I want to create a person, if I want to create a person, I have to. If I want to use the person methods, I have to create a person first. If this method were not static, I could just use the, the. I could just refer to the methods by themselves. So I'll create a person p, which is a new person with this string as name and a, my variable a here. Oops, 
my variable a as the address. This whole thing, this whole object that I just created, I pass as the address. Because person is composed of a string and an address, and then a few other things. I'm also going to set the year birth to 1961 using p.yearbirth because year birth is public, so I can use it just like this. Um, you better have getters and setters, but for the purposes of this tutorial, this is good enough. And then I'm just going to print out p.toString. I'm going to call a method in the person class. Okay? So let's do this. Let's run it. And then let's see what was printed out. So this printed out the name, Barack Obama, the age 56, just like here, the name, parenthesis, the age. And then in a new line, I should print the address. And correctly, in a new line, it printed the whole address, just like it knows how to print it from the address object. So notice how here I am referring to the uh, the address object that I had over here that I that I created here, right? So person is composed of address, string, and integer. Okay, and address is something that I already created. This is how classes interact with each other. I can also call a method from the address class right here, for example. For example, I could say, if I want to say if something's a valid zip code, right, I could say boolean is zip, and then I'm going to use, and here's how you use it, I'm going to use the addresses is valid zip code. How do I access the address object from this main method. Well, remember the address object is inside the class person. So first I need to access uh, an object of type person. P is an object of type person, so I'll type P. Dot. Then from P, which is a person, I'm going to access the address field, which is public. So address. The address object here is one of these objects, okay? So I can call immediately is valid US code. So I have P, the address within P, and then is valid US code. And then I can give the US code that I want. So for example, 60093-6756, which is a valid US code. And then I will just print system.out.println uh, is zip, which is my value. That should print true. So let's run this. It's running, and for some reason, maybe I didn't save. Let's run it again. Oops, one error. Oh, system. System.out. All right. Let's run this, and it printed the name with the age, the address, and then the last system out print line printed true. Basically, I validated this is zip here, right? And look what I did because my my object is is a composed object is using composition and it has an address, right? I can refer to the address by looking at the object, then the variable name that is of type address, and then any method really in the address um, in the address class. I can even comprise this more. Like let's say I have a phone class. The phone class has a number, an area code, a country code. So it has a constructor that sets them all. It has a little string method that formats them, and then it has a two-string method that displays it as a string. And I can have a person that is comprised of an address, a name, a year of birth, and say a phone. And I will say public phone, phone, all right, lowercase phone. And then what I can do here, just as I say person PA, I can create a new phone here, phone PH equals new phone, and then the international code is like two, the number is 223456, oops, and the area code is 9. Okay, 
I'm using the constructor phone here. That's the constructor phone. Co uh, country code, area code, number. So I'm using it here. Country code, area code, uh, country code, area code, number. Remember, I just added a phone to my person object. So what I will do after this, I will say p.phone equals ph. Right? So I will just set the phone of this person, the phone here of this person, I will set it to uh, ph, which is my new phone object. So I am using other objects that I've created and I'm sticking them into the person class and I can interact with these objects. Now if I wanted to print this, I can print at the very end here system.out.println. Now I want to access the phone of this person. I would say p.phone.toString, which is a phone, it's a method of the phone. Okay? And I can run this, see if it compiles with no errors. Oh, I need to save it. Okay, let's see if it compiles with no errors. And it compiled with no errors. And what it had is this. The person's name and address, which is part of what I was doing. True, because I'm printing the uh, whether this is a, a valid zip code. And then the phone is this phone formatted. This phone, this format is coming from the class phone. But because I am using it uh, in the person, I can say p.phone.toString. I can call objects, and from those objects I can call their methods inside my class person in this case. So the interaction between person, address, and phone number shows the composition uh, concept in Java. The class person is composed of a string, an address object, a phone object, and well, an integer. But Usually composition refers to objects. So it's comprised of a phone, an address, and a string. An address and phone are classes that I designed and I can use them like so in the different uh, settings of the settings of the composition pattern. So there you go, that's composition.